Eric, one of the deep questions that human beings ask about themselves are, what are we? Uh, and a traditional answer has given uh, a soul, uh, an immortal soul or some kind of soul that's united with a body. Religions talk about this, uh, obviously many philosophers. Um, what, what can we say from a modern scientific point of view about the concept of, of soul? Uh, is, is it just to be dismissed? I don't think the concept of soul should be dismissed from a modern scientific view. I think it has to change and remarkably uh, the most scientific concept of the soul is uh, one of the oldest which is Aristotle's conception of the soul as the form of the body. Uh, Aristotle said the soul is the form of a body you know a living body with organs and a few little things like that. Uh, so we can think about the form of the body very clearly. Right? Today in scientific terms you can think about the form of your body in terms of your DNA the information contained in your DNA. That's the form. That's a structure. Okay. And we can think of the form of our brains. The form of your brain is the synapses and all their connections, the sure. interconnected patterns. The Aristotelian concept of the soul makes an enormous amount of scientific sense. Uh, it's not the Cartesian uh, or Thomistic conception of the soul. Dualistic or something that's immaterial. That's right. I mean, uh, you have the form of your body like a basketball has the form of roundness. Well, you say you have the form. Uh, why do you even need a word soul if, if the body is just a body and the brain is just a brain? Why are you introducing a new term? You're saying it's important. We should have it. Why? Well, I'm actually not introducing a new term. I'm using an old term in an old way. Okay. What I'm saying is you don't need that term if you're just going to have the, the, the brain. It's to say the form of the brain, the structure of the brain, the pattern of the brain. All right. Well, I think that uh, it's important to think about the form of the body, and here's why. Think about the way uh, people have talked about computers and what could be done with bodies and computers. Maybe we scan your body, right? Right. And maybe uh, you know we put you in some Star Trek style right, scanner right, right, right. And, or a big Xerox machine, right? And scan your body and abstract the form. Now, people have talked about doing this with brains. They talk about you know uh, whole brain emulation. Yeah. Right, so we could take a brain and scan it and generate uh, an exactly uh, functionally equivalent structure of that brain inside a computer. So that's a pattern. That's it's a, a pattern. Right. Okay. But that that software brain inside the computer, or I, it would have to have a software body. The brain doesn't exist by itself. So we make your body. We abstract its form. We embed it in some kind of computational or digital substrate. Right? It's now a kind of energy of some kind, electrical energy, whatever. Um, that has the same form as your body does. Mm -hmm. right? That has the same soul as you do. So if you were necessarily your body, then yeah, it would make no sense. But I think these computational possibilities show us that you're not necessarily this flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. right? You could, I mean, if technology were advanced enough, um, live on in some kind of computational or digital uh, instantiation. And, and would I have my first person experience? I, certainly, if, 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 if this, my pattern is in the computer and you ask, the com, you ask me through the computer questions, I would answer it as if, you know, who my children are, or whatever. I, I, I'd feel the same. But would I have the same first person awareness that I have now? when I was in the computer. I don't know if you would have the same first person awareness that you have now. I don't think that the first person awareness that you have now is the same as the first person awareness you're going to have in 10 seconds. Well, I think it is. Yeah, I know you think it is, but that's an illusion. Okay. Well, I, I, uh, I'm not terribly impressed with consciousness and the, and the stream of consciousness of the first person self. I have it, I love it, but I don't think it's a permanent uh, substance. So, so you think it's like created every moment? And yeah. It, and and, and, it, and, it, and it, 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 it artificially uh, uh, cr creates its, its own sense of its own memory. So we, we're at, we exist at every instant and have the, the sense of, of continuity because we're at that instant remembering all the previous Correct. things. Yeah, the first person sense of self is a very pleasant illusion constructed by my brain from moment to moment. 
Okay. Well, I, I, there may be a consistency here. So if, if you are able to take the form of my brain and body, put it into a computer, and it would really be me, uh, and it would have its own uh, sense of moment-to-moment Correct. first person, yeah. it would have that sense. Well, it would be in, in the same sense that you have in the same sense uh, that yeah. you, your uh, first it, person experience now is cons- is consistent with and a continuation of what yours was ten minutes ago. Right. Yeah. In that same in the sense. same sense. Right. In exactly the same right. sense. Because obviously, if you can do it in one, you can do it in two. That's correct. And if you do it in two, you can do it in an infinite right. number. And so there could be an infinite number of things that um, you know claim to be me at that one moment. I'm not sure that they would claim to be. You know, you. Right? You said it's the form I mean, of my body and my brain, and it's 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 unique to me. Well, it you're this in, you're an individual that has a form, and so copies can be made of you. Okay, right. But I don't. Uh, so it's a, it, it's it's more like a a very identical twin. That's right. It's what you might say is an isomorphic twin. The same pattern, same form, same right. structure. But it's going to go on and do other things. Yeah, and, and, it, and at the moment it'll be the same, but, but a, a, a fraction of a second later right. it's already it's, different. It's already different. So it already has its own yeah. life and existence. Right. right. Your life has branched. You, right. You've, you've somehow uh, you know, made a copy of yourself on yeah, but it's or something. But it's not your life anymore. Yeah, it's, it's your life. It, it 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 may have your memory, but it's not your life. It's well, we a copy have, of you that 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 creates its own existence. I mean, that's the best you can get. Well, we have two lives that overlap. Yeah, right. Our lives are four dimensional things that are extended in time. As yeah, well as and, space. and when you made the duplicate it, before that, there was only one. Then you made the duplicate. Now there are, there are two. But that second no, no, one. No, 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 no. You've got this wrong. There are two lives that overlap, and when I made the duplicate. That overlap came apart. That's a four-dimensional way of thinking. If you were looking at okay. it four-dimensionally, you would have two lives that. Four, right. It's like two. And, but rows if you didn't make the copy, together. it would have never been that way. Correct. You, you've had to have made the copy at some point in that four-dimensional That's play. That's and right. And then, then retrospectively, you could have looked at the overlap prior. Well, if you were somehow, and this is. Very metaphorical. If you were somehow to look at the whole thing, you know, if you were in a fifth dimension looking at this four dimensional box. Oh, that, that's beyond my pay grade. The eh, fifth dimension. <laughs> roll with it. Okay. All you right. know, I mean, if you were to do that, then you would see that there are two lives that they overlap for a little while. But that's probably neither here nor there. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't yeah. change things to think of that, except maybe what I like about this is it could maybe decenter decenter us a little bit from putting too much of a value on the immediate consciousness of the first person of ourselves of ourselves so it gives us another way so if you follow your logic if you can really do that and you can really make that duplicate and it's consistent and it does have its own consciousness and live moment to moment it makes us question our own sense of continuity of consciousness that we think is this unity when in fact that may be an illusion of it's really this moment to moment existence right. with the recreation of a past. I get that right? You've got you've got that right. E- I, even in three dimensions. Yeah. Okay. However many dimensions you want. I like I like the Theravedic Buddhist uh, imagery of where somebody says, you know, I'm me and I persist and the image says no. Your life is like a flame passed from torch to torch. Hmm. Right, and so is it the same flame that was on the torch way back there? So they say, "This mm. what kind of question is that?" Mm. What matters is the is the passage, the continuity, and uh, there's no identity. So I don't think that there's any personal identity. I think, uh, like with the Theravadic Buddhists, there's personal persistence, but it's the continuity of recurring pattern. Right. So what matters is the pattern the form of your body and its potentials that can be actualized or not in various ways, right? And uh, that's what you're concerned about with even here. You're not really concerned that, you know, first-person consciousness, it's me. I mean, you're concerned about what your first-person consciousness does is try to ensure that the potentialities of your form get realized. <laughs>